Welcome to Wonder Math. Today I'm going to go over the SAT practice test number five, section three. There are 20 questions for 25 minutes, and there are no penalty for wrong answers in SAT. So always take the best guess if you're not sure you're finding an answer. Okay. So here, which of the following is the equation of line L in the graph? So the y step is 1, the slope is rise over 1, which is 1 over 1, so it is 1x plus 1. 1 is the slope, and the 1 plus is the y step. It's always y equals to mx plus b for a linear function, where m is the slope, b is the y step, or we call this the initial value, or what you start with, and m is the rate of change. There are a lot of questions involving y equals mx plus b, so make sure you know what they mean. Two, the circle above with the circle O has a circumference of 36. So the whole circumference is 36. It says what is the length of minor arc AC, which is 90 degrees, which is 1 fourth. So you just got to divide by 4 because 90 is 1 fourth of 360, so it is 9. 36 divided by 4 is 9. What are the solution of the quadratic equation 4x squared minus 8x minus 12 equals to 0? Take a 4 to simplify. Then I get x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. And from here, you should factor. So what multiplies to negative 3 and adds to negative 2 must be x minus 3 and plus 1, right? They multiply to negative 3 and adds to negative 2. So your solutions are from here and there when they become 0. So x plus 1 becoming 0 when x is negative 1. And here you get x minus 3 is 0 when x is 3. You can move 3 to the other side, right? So it's negative 1 and 3, so it is b. 4. Which of the following is an example of a function whose graph and the xy plane has no x-intercept? So that means it will not go through the x-intercept, meaning it will not have any solutions, right? Something like that, or it could be something like that. So a linear function whose rate of change is not 0. So if it was a linear function, the, if slope was 0, it looks like this. So then there is a possibility it won't check it won't hit the x-axis, but if there is a slope, it will always hit the x-axis, so A is not true. B, a quadratic function with rear zeros, that means quadratic that goes through zeros with no rear solutions, means you'll get imaginary solution possibly, but it will not have rear solutions, so it will never hit x-axis like this and that, so it has to be C. A cubic polynomial with at least one rear zero, so that means it will hit zero at least once, so it has to be C. In the equation above, k is the constant. If x is 9, what is the value of k? So square root of x plus 2 minus 9 equals to 0 because x is 9. If you move 9 to the other side by adding, you get square root of k plus 2 equals to 9. So let's square on both sides to get rid of the square root. So x plus 2 equals to 81. Move 2 by subtracting from both sides. So I get k equals to 79. Oops, 79. D. 6. Which of the following is equivalent to the sum of the expression a squared minus 1 and a plus 1? So sum of these two, so a squared minus 1 plus a plus 1, minus 1 plus 1, they cancel out, so I get a squared plus a. So it is a. 7. Jackie has two summer jobs. She works as a tutor and gets paid $12 per hour, okay? And she works as a lifeguard and gets paid 9.5 per hour. She can work no more than 20 hours, so if I call x hours for tutoring and y hours for hours that she lifeguards, it cannot be more than 20, that means x plus y 
cannot be more than means has to be less than or equal to. Okay, right? cannot be more than meaning less than or equal to. But she wants to make at least 220 per week. So at least 220, so must be more or equal to, right? So let's go ahead and find the expression that has x plus y less than or equal to 20, not greater than, not greater than, so it has to be these two. And it has to be 12x and 9.5y, they're all same. So we are more we're interested in the inequality. So least means greater or equal to 220, not less than, right? So it is C. Eight. In air, the speed of sound s in meters per second is a linear function of the air temperature t. In the degree Celsius, it is given by s of t equals to 0.60 plus 331.4, which of the following statement is the best interpretation of number 33.4 in this context. So this is a linear function again. It is mx plus b. So this is what you start with. Initial fee, m was the rate of change 0.6, but we are interested in 331.4. And it was also the whiner, so when x is zero. So A, the speed of sound in meter per sound at zero Celsius. Was T the temperature? So yes, this is what we start with when T is zero, right? This becomes zero, so it has to be A. But let's go through the other one. The speed of sound in meters per second. Oh, yeah. So that's the rate of change, but we are asking about 331, so that's not true. The increase in the speed of sound, the increase in the speed of sound, so those are all rate of change, so those are not true. A is the right answer, the y intercept, then x is zero. If x and y is the solution of the system of equations above, and x is greater than zero, what is the value of x? So, y equals x squared will look, and x is greater than zero, so it will look something like this, right? Oh, if it's greater than zero, it won't touch zero, something like that, so it means they're all positive. So what is the value of x times y? So here, I think the best way to do this is to guess and check. So x times y. So here, you can multiply x and y. So let me go ahead and multiply by x on both sides. So I get xy equals to x cubed. What can x cubed be? One cubed. If x was 1, it could be 1 cubed, which is 1, 2, 3, 9. It's hard to become a cube number, so it has to be 8. If you have more time, double check with the other equation. Let's say x was 1, right? So 2y plus 6 equals to 2 times 1 plus 3, which is 4. So 2y plus 6 equals to 8. So 2y equals to, when you subtract 6 from both sides, you get 2, so 2y equals to 2, meaning y is also 1. So when x was 1, y was 1, so 1 times 1 is 1, so it has to be a. If a squared plus b squared equals to z and ab is 5, which of the following is equivalent to 4z? So 4 times z was a squared plus b squared plus a times y, which is ab. So let me go ahead and distribute it. It's 4a squared plus 4b squared plus 8ab. So what square, right? They're all square. Square becomes this. So it has to be what? 2a squared and must be 2b squared and addition, right? That's where then when you FOIL it, you get the middle term. I can show you. 2a plus 2b times 2a plus 2b. You see how this becomes 4a to a squared 
and this becomes what 4ab and here also the inner terms becomes 4ab so you get total of 8ab and at the end you get 4b squared so this is true so it is 2a plus 2b squared b the value of the right circular center there is a two cubic centimeters so cylinder is what the base times height for the value if it has the top base and the bottom base parallel and equal which is cylinder all prism so the area of the base big b for a circular cylinder is pi r squared circle area of the circle and height and that was 22. what is the volume in cubic centimeters of a right circular cylinder with twice the radius and half the height twice the radius so now you have pi 2 times r squared and height is now half of it so h over 2. so i get when you square it i get pi times 4r squared right 2r times 2r is 4r squared times h over 2. so 4 divided by 2 is pi times 2 times r squared times height so compared to this what happened it just got multiplied by 2 so now you double this so it becomes 44 you see it's 2 times pi r squared height we know pi r squared height was 22 so 22 times 2 is 40 12 which of the following is equivalent to 9 this is 9 cubed to 1 fourth right when the power is raised by power you multiply them so this means it's 9 times 9 times 9 and 1 fourth means you fourth root it so you see some threes in here and you can you will notice that 9 is 3 times 3 so this is same thing as what 9 is 3 times 3 9 is 3 times 3 9 is 3 times 3 and fourth root means what if you have the number the same number four times multiplied you can take it out as one and you have what oh uh, fourth root of three squared so it's three times three squared and again fourth root is raising it to the one fourth when you have a power raised to a power you can multiply it so I get 3 times 2 times 1 fourth is half, right? So half, yeah, I mean 3 times 3 to half, which is 3 times square root of 3. So it is D, right? 13. At a restaurant, N cups of tea are made by adding tea 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 bags tea tea bags to hot water if t equals to m plus 2 how many additional tea bags are needed to make each additional cup of tea each additional cup of tea you need two more originally but it's asking for original additional cup so that's asking for slope you see another question involving slope in the linear so what's the slope it's one so it is one not two Okay, I think that's a common mistake. It asks for what additional tea bag are needed to make each additional cup of tea. So when n increases by one, t increases by one too. Fourteen. The function f is defined by the equation above, which of the following is the graph of y equals two negative of this. So that is uh, negative of that is negative 2 to the x minus 1 right you have to distribute the whole thing by 1 negative 1 so as you can see it has negative so it goes down so it can be b okay what what about the y intercept now it's a matter of the y intercept so and it gets flipped so it has to be either c or d you see 
this one right here, 2x plus 1, must look like this, right? And if it's negative, it flips, so it's not a, it should look like C and D, right? But we can also check with the y-intercept because they all have a different y-intercept. So y-intercept, it means, well, when x is equal to 0, so plug it in 0. Different than the linear equation, this is not always your y-intercept, okay? You have to plug it in 0. So when I plug in 0 here, I get negative 2, 2, 0, minus 1. What is a number raised by 0? It is 1. It becomes 1, so it's negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. So find the y-intercept of negative 2. It has to be C, not A, for sure. 15. LN drives an average of 100 miles each week. His car travels an average of 25 miles per gallon. Okay. Alan would like to reduce his weekly expenditure gasoline by $5. Assume the gasoline costs $4 per gallon. Which equation can Alan use to determine how many fewer average miles um, he should drive each week? How many fewer average, right? So first, so it's $4 per gallon, right? $4 per gallon. But we want to reduce it to what? We want to reduce it by $5. So that means we have to see how many miles, right? He wants to reduce by dividing this by what? The gallons per mile. Do you guys, do you see it? We wanted to divide it by gallons per mile. And how many gallons per mile does he use? It was 25 Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It should be miles per gallon, right? Not miles per, it, each gallon is what? 25, 25 miles per gallon. Then you can get rid of the gallons and miles get canceled out. So you get the dollars, $5 times M. So it is four over 25 times M. So for these, when you get confused with a lot of units looking similar, just write it out so you can see the canceling units. So it is 4 over 25M equals to $5, 5, right? So you know these are not true. It has to be one of these two. It's $4 per gallon, but you divide by the miles per gallon, which is 25 miles per gallon. 16. Maria plans to rent a boat. The boat rental costs 60 per hour. So let me just call our H, 60 per hour. And he, she will also have to pay for a water safety course that costs $10. That's flat fee. So again, it's a linear equation again. So Maria wants to spend no more than, not equal to, no more than means less than or equal to 280 for the rental and the course. If the boat rental is available only for a whole number of hours, what is the maximum, the most hour that she can rent? So let's start solving for the inequality for H. So move 10 from both sides. So I get less than or equal to 270. So divide by 60, divide by 60. So hour can be less than or equal to Oh, four, can it be five? Five times 60 is 300. It will be somewhere close to four, right? 27 divided by six is 24, so 30, so it's 4.5. So can he rent five hours? No, it has to be less than 4.5. So the maximum hour that he can rent is four hours, can be Five hours. It can be three hours, but we're looking for the maximum number of hours. 17. What value of P is the solution of the equation above? So let's just start, going, start solving the equation. 2 plus AP minus 8 equals to 5P. So when you combine like terms, I get 10P. 2 minus 8 is minus 6 equals to 5P. 
So move 10p, 10p, I get negative 6 equals to negative 5p. So divide by negative 6. No, no, no. Divide by 5, negative 5, right? So divide by, to solve for p, you have to divide by negative 5. So I get 6 over 5. Negative divided by negative is positive, so it becomes 6 over 5. If you have time, you can plug it back and double check your work. But I won't do that right now. The system of equation above has solution x and y, solve for x. Oh, this one is easy because you already have available solve for y. So substitute 2x for y. So half of 2x plus y, which is 2x, equals to 21 over 2. So I get half of 2x plus 2x is 4x equals to 21 over 2. So multiply by 2 on both sides to get rid of the denominators. So I get 4x equals to 21. So divide by 4 from both sides. So I get x equals to 21 over 4. You can just write it as a fraction. 21 over 4 on your grid or the response sheet. The expression above is equivalent to a over x plus 2 squared. So this is same, but here you have to what? Multiply by x plus 2 to make the common denominator. So you're looking for a. What's in the denominator when the what's on the numerator when denominator is x plus 2 squared? So I have 2x plus 6 over x plus 2 squared minus distributed 2x plus 4 over, now you have the same denominator, x plus 2 squared. So it's minus, be careful, it's minus. So it's 2x minus 2x, gone. Positive 6 minus 4 is 2 over x plus 2 square. So what is a? The numerator a is 2. 20. The intersecting line r s and t are shown below. What is the value of x, this angle? So you can use the sum of the triangle theorem, which means the triangle add up to 180. Or if you remember the exterior angle theorem, if you have a triangle, and expand one side. So this will be equal to some of the other two angles not next to this angle. So if this was 30, 20 and 50, then this becomes 70. But even if you don't remember this, you can still use all the angles here. So here they add up to 180 because it's a linear pair. So 180 minus 106 is 74. So this is 74. So you know by using the exterior angle theorem, it's this plus that equals to that, which is 74 plus 23, which is 97. But let's suppose you didn't know that, then you can find this angle by subtracting these two from 180. So that is minus 74 minus 23, which is 106 minus 23, which is 83. So if it's 83 now, they got to add up to 180. So you can do 180 minus 83, which is these two added. You see? They're the same thing. 180 minus that should be, right, equal to these two added. So that is 97, which we had previously. So it's 97.